Welcome to this tutorial video. In this video we'll be looking at activity networks and dummy activities. Now dummy activities is a concept that does cause some confusion for year 12 further math students so hopefully this video will give some clarity as to why we need dummy activities. So here we have our precedence table and again I have a list of activities A to E. Each of these represents a, a step in a project and on the right hand side we've got the immediate predecessors. These are the activities that have to be completed before the next activity can commence. And we'd like to construct an activity network from this particular precedence table. So first of all, activity A, B and C, each of these three have no immediate predecessors so we know that's the starting point. Okay? Nothing has to be completed before A, B and C can be commenced. So they start, they start simultaneously, and we have activity A written on this edge, activity B on the centre edge, and activity C on the third and final edge. They have no immediate predecessors, so that's our starting position. At the other end, we can see that activity D and E are not listed anywhere in the immediate predecessors, which means nothing relies upon them to be completed before the next activity can start. So these D and E activities are actually our finishing activities. Nothing relies on them to be finished um, in order to start something new. So these are our final finishing um, activities. So now we just have to look and see how do we connect these three starting to these two finishing. And of course we use this precedence table to do that. So first of all we can see that activity D cannot start until activity A is completed. So activity A is completed then activity D starts. But notice there's also a B here as an immediate predecessor for activity D. So we've already drawn in activity D here from A and then to the finish point, our finishing vertex. However, this also says in our precedence table that activity B is also an immediate predecessor for activity D. So effectively we need this line to join up to the vertex at the end of A, but also to join up at the vertex at the end of the B. Now this this is impossible, it can't be at two places at once, and we can't draw an activity twice. That's one of the rules of these activity networks. You can only draw one line. So we're at a bit of a problem here. How can we possibly connect A and B to activity D with a single line? The answer, ladies and gentlemen, is a dummy, um, a dummy activity. So here, activity B is completed and it is joined to the vertex at the end of activity A, so to meet this requirement that A and B are both immediate predecessors before activity D to com can commence. So A is completed, B is completed, and it's joined via what we call a dummy variable to allow this immediate predecessor rule to be true. Okay? At that point, A and B are both connected to D and it can be completed. Now this dummy isn't a real activity, it's just a notation or a technique used to join an otherwise isolated activity as a prerequisite. Let's continue on. E follows on from activity C. Activity C is completed and E can commence. However, again, activity E requires B to be completed as well and joined. So again, we have this problem where at the end of C, activity E is drawn in, but we also need activity E to be joined to B. We can't draw two activity E's, so again we use a dummy variable at the end of the vertex of activity B. We join it down to the end of the vertex of activity C. Now we can say that B is completed to start E, and C is completed to start E. We've upheld the rule of our precedent table. So we've now completed our activity network. Just very, very quickly, we can see that a dummy activity is required if two activities require some but not all the immediate predecessors. Okay. And a dummy variable is a rather our, our dummy sorry activity is drawn at the end of our immediate predecessor down to the beginning of our next activity. And finally, we use dotted lines to represent our dummy activities. Your turn to try this. Here's a new precedence table. Try and draw this if you can into an activity network. I'll let you pause and we'll be back shortly. How'd you go? Let's have a look at our activity network for this particular precedence table. Well there we see 
A and B are our starting because they've got no immediate predecessors. A and B are drawn in. C has to follow once A is completed. So A is the immediate predecessor for C. That's correct. D can commence once B is completed. So B is the immediate predecessor for D. E requires both C and D to be um, completed. So E follows D. Now C is up here. The only way you can get C to be drawn to E is to again use a dummy variable or a dummy um, activity. F requires C to be completed as a predecessor, so it's drawn in, and of course G requires both E and F, so G can commence once E and F are completed. Again, we're using a dummy activity to make this a possibility. I hope this has added some clarity to dummy activities, and has set you on the path to better understand dummy activities in the context of activity networks. Thanks for watching.